Check the description for the following discount codes. Today I'm going to review the new play seat trophy. The box is down to my right here and it's a tubular constructed play seat. It's not a foldable cockpit like the play seat challenge. I know a lot of people um, in the comments asked me to compare this to the FGT Lite, which is a foldable. This is not a foldable cockpit. It is designed to be a static cockpit. But what I will say is, just from having unpacked it, uh, and it all come quite nicely packaged, you know, as all fine there, it is quite light. Um, so it might be relatively easy to move around your house and potentially even, you know, maybe stand it up on its end or something to maybe tuck it behind a sofa or put it in a cupboard, even though it doesn't actually fold away. But we'll see once I get it together, which shouldn't really take that long because there is only about, only about 10 pieces here uh, on the floor. Um, I've got the, the manual and I may as well just show you a quick close up of that. It's just full of your usual illustrations showing you what parts you've got and how to put it together. So I will reference this as I'm putting it together, just in case you know there's any mistakes or anything in there that I might notice and need to share with, with you guys. It actually comes with, I think this is a pair of gloves for assembling it, which is, um, which is different. I've, yeah, it is, yeah. I've never had a pair of gloves before come with a cockpit for me to assemble it with. I'm not gonna wear them, because <laughs> like, I don't really know why you'd need to. I mean, it's all really clean. The, the parts aren't dirty or anything like that. And um, I'm sure they're probably not worried about getting fingerprints on it either. But should you need to, there's a pair of gloves there. But aside from that, there's just these 10 pieces. Looks like we've got a, a single rear piece, I'm gonna guess. Two front side pieces, a um, wheel deck, which is this. Now this is about, about four mil thick. It feels quite light, but it is four mil thick. We don't have any other bracing um, except for these pieces either side, which will stop it from flexing that way a little bit. Uh, and then it's pre-drilled obviously for all your various different wheel bases. They do show in their sort of advertising footage, the Fnatic DD1 um, or DD2, it could be screwed onto this. So um, I guess they're, they're, they're saying it's gonna be for use with direct drive. I'll be testing it with the, um, it's not, I was gonna say the CSL DD, but it's the console version. So the, the GTDD Pro is what I'll be testing on here. And that will be in another review as well. Although I'm sure it's pretty much gonna review just the same as the CSL DD did. But this is the wheel deck. Now what concerns me about this is there is no bracing either across ways or lengthways none whatsoever. So the only rigidity that this has is provided by this 90 degree bend here and here. And then of course the side piece is also bent at 90 degrees. Now that does provide a reasonable amount of rigidity because when you fold a piece of metal at 90 degrees like that and then try and fold it across its other axis, it's really not gonna flex very much at all. So whilst in my hands here, you know, and showing you on camera, I'm like, mm, could be a little bit flexy. Once it's bolted at the sides to the cockpit, we shall see exactly how it performs. Again, this is pre-drilled for all sorts of different pedals. So hopefully the DD Pro pedals will, will bolt straight onto these without too much bother. But they're the two sort of important pieces um, that are worth focusing on aside from the whole cockpit itself. The, um, the seat is basically like framework and then a, a cover that goes over the top and it's held together with Velcro. It actually looks a bit like, a bit like body armor when it's uh, in its current position, but we'll see how comfortable that turns out to be. And that is a little reminiscent of the play seat challenge the way that you've just got that sort of material uh, and then the Velcro to hold it all together. But that is a lot more padded than what the play seat challenge is, I can already tell you that. But um, in fact, I may as well just give you a little bit more of a close up. There is like a mesh 
here that's going to make it a bit more breathable. And this material here, it feels, I don't know what to describe it as. It's like, it, it is a very soft touch. I'd say it feels nice. I couldn't tell you exactly what it is. It's got quite a nice, quite a nice smell to it as well, if that's your sort of thing. Um, but yeah, they're all the bits laid out there. There is only about 10 pieces, so I'll get it thrown together and just speed it up. Um, and then we'll look at it once it's all assembled. I'll show you where the adjustments are um, and sort of comment on how it was to put together. So let's get it done. Well, that went together really easily. Um, I didn't encounter any difficulties at all. There was a couple of slightly fiddly bits where some of the tubular sections joined together and there are like four, six, there are 12 M6 bolts that go in all around the tubular section at different places. So you need to get all 12 thread holes to line up at the same time. Uh, and that can be a little tricky. I actually used an Allen key, sort of, let's say I'm putting um, one of the M6 bolts into a particular hole and, and it was like, you know, maybe off by a quarter. So a quarter of that thread was covered up by the tube. I grabbed one of the spare Allen keys and put that in the next nearest thread and just use that to slightly lever the tubular section round a little bit, just so the thread would line up perfectly. And then the more of this, the more the bolts you got in, you know, the less you had to do this because those bolts were all holding it where it needed to be. But you know, aside from that, which is just a little fiddly, there was no difficulty assembling it whatsoever. It all goes together really well. The, um, the seat section literally just slides on from the top here and then Velcro's all around the back and all underneath the bottom, very similar to how the play seat challenge does. And whilst I first thought, nah, it's a little bit, bit of a cheapy way of doing things versus having you know, a proper seat on a rail with an adjustable backrest, the seat, I've sat in it already, the seat is very comfortable. It's noticeably wider than the play seat challenge for those of you that own a play seat challenge, uh, which for me is nice because um, the play seat challenge is a little snug um, for me. Some people like a nice snug seat, you know, and say it's almost realistic, like a tight fitting bucket seat, which is very true. But for me, I like a little more space um, helps me keep a little bit cooler when I'm racing. So the seat is very comfortable. I don't think anyone will have any issues sitting in that for elongated periods of time. First impressions of the rigidity of it all are actually really quite positive. Um, the only thing I'm slightly concerned about is this wheel deck doesn't have, so you can adjust the angle of it like that and you can get this whole thing and rotate it around the other way so it's hanging further out the back versus further this way. There is no forward or backward adjustment aside from flipping the plate 180. So um, what slightly concerns me is that for this angle adjustment, there are no, it's not like pre-drilled holes or toothed segments, it's just a smooth arc. Um, so that relies entirely upon the four M8 bolts being done up tight enough to stop that from potentially moving when you're racing with a powerful wheelbase on there and you've got the torque up quite high. You know, we'll see in practice how that actually works and I'll try and move it, you know, within, within reasonable amounts of force. You know, there's no point in me getting a, a long bar on here and trying to lever it up and down because that's not what's gonna be happening when people are using it. But I will, once the steering wheel that's all fitted, give it some up and down and see if I can make it move at all. But, you know, within reasonable constraints, sort of stuff that it would be expected to deal with rather than stuff that it wouldn't be expected to deal with, like a huge great bar for leverage and going, oh look, I can make it force past the bolts. Yeah, well done, Carl. You've added six foot of leverage, of course you can. Um, so we'll, we'll bear that in mind. The actual sort of tubular section here at the front that that, that bolts to seems very solid. You know, it is supported both here 
and this side. So it can't flex sort of that way um, at all, or at least not easily. It's metal, we can always make it bend or flex with enough force, but I don't think that's gonna be an issue. And I'm not really feeling anything in the way of side to side either. The whole cockpit is really quite light. I mean, that's just like a couple of fingers I'm using to pick it up literally from the floor <laughs> all the way up to there. I mean, there's no you know, sim racing equipment attached to it yet, but when they, they call it a frameless design, I think it says on their website, because there's no sort of base section like you would get in an aluminium profile cockpit. And that does save a lot of weight. Um, so it's gonna be certainly gonna be easier to move around in your play space than something like that would be. But one thing I will say already, less material, um, both in the base itself and for what makes up the seat and a high price tag don't sit well with me. This was £530 delivered to my door and that puts it kind of, that puts it about £70 or £80 more than the GT Amiga Titan with the RS6 seat. And that is a proper seat on sliders with an adjustable backrest. The cockpit itself, probably similar amounts of material and how solid it is in construction. Um, I'm not, I don't think we'll see any flex where it joins there because there's quite a lot of bolts holding that together as well, but we will see it is a very tight fit. So there's no real play where the interference fit is. Um, but there is of course no shift amount with this either, which there would be with the GT Amiga Titan, which is probably its nearest competitor price wise. If you look at things like um, the uh, Simhound cockpit, that's like 300, 330 quid without a seat. If you added a seat, well actually that could be a competitor then, because if you add a seat to that for a couple of hundred notes, you'd be at 500 quid. And that is a small aluminium profile cockpit. The, um, the small Simlabs aluminium profile cockpit is quite a bit more expensive than this with a seat. I think it's like over another 100 pounds. So, not really in the same price point for comparison. Really, the GT Amiga Titan is the nearest competitor to this for something that comes with a seat as well, or as I say, the um, Simhound racing cockpit, but they don't supply seats, you need to fit your own. So again, comparing like, but then, you know, Simhound one is, is an aluminium profile cockpit, so that's got a lot of adjustability and bolt stuff to it. This being tubular, you can't easily do that. And the same applies for the GT Amiga Titan. So that's probably the best comparison. The price is very close within about 70, 80 notes, and they're both tubular, which give them limited adjustability. And in fact, the wheel deck on the GT Amiga Titan also doesn't adjust that much. It's really only angle and a little bit of forward and backward. I'll grab the camera and do a quick walk around and just show you, you know, where the adjustments are because where it's attached here, you can pull it apart like that to make the whole cockpit a bit longer or a bit shorter. And under this here, when I undo the Velcro, you'll see what adjusts the angle of the backrest as well. And also the, the pedal tray I'll show you. So let me just get the camera, do a little close up of those things. Then I'll throw on some sim racing gear and we'll give it a little go uh, in dirt rally, presumably, and see how she does. I'll just do a little sort of walk around of the whole thing, first of all, so you can see how it is. As I say, the seat is pretty comfortable. Um, you'll see at the back here, the Velcro that holds it in place, and it's the same underneath. Again, it would be relatively easy to fit a shifter mount to this because there are already some holes either, either side of this cockpit. In fact, I'll show you one right now there's a hole here so you could certainly make something that would either affix to this or affix to this bar here because neither of these two move and to you know to have a shift amount that wouldn't be difficult to do um in fact yeah let's undo this this piece of velcro here and i'll show you where you would adjust the angle of the backrest so do i need to undo that as well yeah why not yeah so you flip those open and you see this bar here, there is a nut and bolt here. You would undo those and you can see there's one, two, three, four, five different holes. So you take the bolt out and obviously the same the other side and that would then allow this backrest 
to tilt further backwards or more upright incrementally and you just put the bolt back in and nip it up and that is all there is um, to that this upright section here is hinged there on a bolt so that's all you would have to do to um, to adjust your angle for that in fact I'll leave it out for now this piece here you undo those two and that then allows this to slide in and out this is not going to be easy to do one-handed in fact it may even be impossible to do you can just see an S start in there. Um, this whole piece just basically slides out about yay far, uh, and then you would just nip them up again. But yeah, I can't really do it with one hand. It's not like, a little easier this side, but you can see yeah, this piece here slides in and out, um, probably about, I don't know, four inches or so, uh, something like that. And then you just nip them up nice and easy. And then the pedal tray, which now that it's fitted, feels reasonably sturdy um, at its outermost points where we've got the 90 degree bends here and here in the middle a bit like the original gt amiga titan plate uh titan um gt amiga prime one uh for the for the the beta one they sent out that had no brace across the middle this will also flex in the middle there but what we need to remember is our pedals are not bolted down in the middle they're going to be bolted down at the extremities or at least that's how you would usually bolt pedals down i wouldn't recommend three individual pedals because they're probably going to be bolted along the middle here and you may find the brake pedal which is the middle one will have a bit of flex under braking but i haven't got individual pedals to test that with i'll be using a more traditional set of pedals that will bolt down in the four corners and that is where this sort of plate is at its strongest so i don't think we're going to see any flex on that and I will press the brake pedal as hard as I can to try and see if I can feel anything when it does happen. As far as adjustment then goes, you've got this four bolts either side and they are actually locked in place with thumb screws. So you can slacken them off uh, and there's even additional holes here that you can put the bolts through if there's not enough movement, movement by just slackening them off and using the slide or the slot here and then the toothed sort of um, ones here. So you slacken it off, you pick it up, slide it along, drop it back down into each of these toothed, you can just about see that tooth there. So that was one, two, three, four, five teeth. So that will allow you to slide it up, slot it down into a different tooth and change the angle of it that way as well as picking it up and down. Uh, and that's just with it in the position, you know, with these here and here, if you actually take them out and put them in different holes, you'll be able to change that even more aggressively. So that's quite a lot of adjustability for the um, pedal tray, which is good. Uh, and as I say with this, you can either flip it round or tilt it, and you've got quite an array of bolt holes. So potentially there's a reasonable amount of forward and backward adjustment if you incorporate using different bolt holes. It, I was about to say they look mirrored because there's one, two, three, one, two, three, but then, these four here and these two actually look slightly more justified that way. But I, I don't know though, because then these three here and these three here, I think maybe it is, it, it is mirrored. Maybe I'll get a tape measure out and check the distance between here and here, see whether they are the same. But it looks like potentially, you know, you can flip it around and it'll be offset that way. Well, you definitely can, it says it in the manual. So there's your forward and back adjustment. So that's it really, you've got forward and back adjustment, angle adjustment, all sorts of angle adjustments and height adjustments for the pedal tray. Um, this is where you would adjust the whole cockpit sliding backwards or forwards by about four inches. And then under that flap, the other side, as I showed you, that's how you would adjust the angle of the backrest. A reasonable amount of adjustment. I think the best thing to do now then is just um, bolt some equipment on and give it a little test drive. Well, I had no trouble fitting the um, DD Pro or the pedals or anything like that. Bolt holes all lined up. Everything is, you know, as you would expect it to be. What I will say already that I've noticed as a negative though, is because you can't just slide the seat forwards and backwards like you can on the GT Amiga Titan, if you're swapping in and out with different races like me and the missus or me and some mates, for example, this cockpit would be absolutely no use to us whatsoever. 
because like we've got a friend that's six foot four, friends that are five foot three, I'm about six foot. We're all we're all different leg lengths. It's just you can't like to adjust the, the length here. You have to undo these bolts, which takes time. Um, but then that only brings the whole thing backwards. If you wanted to bring the seat upright or further back, you've got to undo your Velcro, undo your two bolts. Um, the, the wheel height, there's no way to adjust the wheel height. For me, this is actually a little bit higher than I would like it to be. So there's definitely some drawbacks with this. I mean, you, if you find a comfortable position and you don't have friends around and you don't need to swap it around, then that's going to be fine. But it's just something, you know, you need to bear in mind. There are a few things, but then, you know, like with the GT Mega Titan, you can't adjust the height of the wheel deck. Well, you can a little bit, but not much. Um, but what you can, of course, do with that is adjust the height of the pedals very easily. And you can with this, these, these can be adjusted up and down, like I showed earlier. Um, but the seat on the GT Mega Titan can be adjusted up or down. You know, if you needed to, you could even space it out to make it higher because it is a proper seat that is on runners, sliders, and so it just bolts down with four M8 bolts. So there's definitely an adjustability issue here with the seat compared to something like the GT Amiga Titan, but let's just do a little bit of dirt rally here. What I will say is it is very solid from my quick go in dirt rally so far. I'm not really noticing anything in the way of sort of flex. Um, which I was about to say, it kind of surprised me. It didn't really surprise me because tubular cockpits do tend to be fairly solid. The only place I have noticed flex is, I'll just come to a stop so I can show you, is this piece here, if you try and move it up and down like this, you might be able to see on camera, we've got some flex in this piece here. So where it's welded here, this top section here can move up and down a little bit. Now you don't notice it when you're racing and it may not even do it when I'm racing, um, but I can make it do it. What I can't do though, is make these four bolts here um, break free and for the wheel deck to actually rotate like I thought it might do earlier. I can give this way more grip. I mean, look, I'm actually bending the plastic fitting on this DD Pro here, so that's fine. You're not gonna have an issue with that. I mean, there is a tiny bit of flex up and down here. There is, however, no noticeable side to side flex at all. It's completely, completely rigid. Um, and even the, the pedal tray as well, there is a tiny bit of flex in that. When I brake, like when I push all my force on the brake, but not, not much. Um, although again, really, any at this price point is, I was gonna say it's not really acceptable. 530 notes, no, it's probably not really. I mean, you're within 150 quid of a GT Amiga Prime, and that doesn't have any flex in the pedal tray, at least not using my V3s. With that though, if you fitted individual three pedal setup, you may find some flex in the middle brake pedal because it doesn't have the best pedal tray design. Um, you just have to fit your pedals bearing that in mind. If you had an individual pedal setup, just like you would actually with that, with this one, I would suggest buying your optional base plate that most of those sort of high-end individual pedals have available. And if you then bolt that down to this pedal tray, then you wouldn't get any flex. Uh, so that would be the solution there. If you wanted this cockpit um, and you had high-end individual pedals, you buy your optional base plate. That would solve the issue. But aside from a little bit of flex in the pedal tray, which I don't notice whilst I'm using it, you know, like I can, I can press this brake pedal way harder than I ever need to. Um, I don't feel it move, but if I look at it, I can just see a tiny little bit of, tiny little bit of flex. Well, yeah, just, just a tiny bit. Not much, and now I've come off the track. Can I get back on? Come on, get back on. Right, there we go. But you know, the overall driving experience, the seat is comfortable and nice and wide, noticeably more so than the PlayStation Challenge. The um, eight Newton meters, which is what I'm using this at, it doesn't flex, you know, in use. 
And I think to be honest, with something like the DD1 or DD2 or any of the other higher end wheelbases, you're still not gonna get any noticeable flex in use. Certainly not side to side. If you run mega high force feedback for whatever reason, you probably could get it to flex up and down a little bit there, but I don't know whether it would be enough to notice, you know? Um, you'll probably find flex in your steering wheel or something before you notice that. Similar to the GT Amiga Titan, really. I've tested that with quite a few different high power DD wheelbases, well, not quite a few, two different um, high power DD wheelbases, and there's no noticeable flex in that either. I think it's be the same, it's basically the same, the same design from that point. I'm not feeling any movement like in my seat or in the back half of this rig under hard braking or anything, and even exaggerated braking where I'm literally like using all my strength on the foot, on my foot there. I'm not feeling anything move. I don't know whether you'll see any or not in the video. So it's actually not a bad cockpit from a driving point of view. It, if you get yourself a comfortable seating position and the steering wheel sits where you want it to, I could quite happily sit in this for hours racing and it wouldn't cause me a problem. Now there is no shift amount as far as I'm aware, certainly not one that comes as standard, so that may be an issue for people who like to fit H pattern shifters or sequential shifters or handbrakes, but at the end of the day we can always DIY some stuff and I do have an inkling there might be a third party making a shifter and or handbrake mount um, for this rig. So that would be an easy enough solution. Anyway, let's just stop this for now and sort of give you my, my last thoughts on it. The cockpit itself is a decent enough cockpit with very little flex in all the right places. It has a reasonable amount of adjustability, more so for the pedal tray than anything else. A little bit for the wheel deck, you can flip it round to go back and forward. There's different holes and there's angle adjustment, but there's no real height adjustment, well, there is no height adjustment. The distance from the seat to the pedals is these sliders here that you have to undo four bolts for and move in and out. Um, and whilst it gives you a reasonable amount of adjustment, I put this all the way back just for curiosity and I could barely touch the pedals. Um, currently it's all the way, oh no, it's not quite all the way closed actually. It's a little bit out. Um, maybe like an inch or something. So there's some adjustment there and you can adjust the angle of the seat, but for the biggest problem, you know, it's comfortable as well, no issue with that. The, bi the biggest problem here is the price. This is 70 or so pounds more than a GT Amiga Titan, which is just as solid, if not more solid in certain areas, the pedal tray, for example, and it has a proper seat on a slider that you can just grab the bottom, move it forwards and backwards, and you can tilt the back to exactly where you want it. Meaning, if you have friends around that want to swap over with you, they can just jump in and put the seat where they want and they're, and they're good to go. With this, you'll set it up for you and only you. Oh, and someone said to me, Carl, because of the way this sort of length adjustment is, can we actually loosen them off and slide the back section off to be able to store it in two pieces? And the answer to that is no. There is slot cut in the sides here and those slots terminate after a certain point. So you can't just slide it out or at least the wiggling and the tugging that I gave um, wouldn't let me get it out. I didn't actually take all four bolts all the way out, which is what I think you would need to do. So if you were happy to remove the bolts completely, then it would just slide out because I guess that's how they put it together. Um, but you know, the idea is you just slacken them off. So again, that isn't something you can adjust quickly to swap from person to person. You'd want thumb screws. So here's a weird thing. They've got thumb screws on the pedal tray. So you could quickly adjust the pedal tray for different positions, but they haven't put thumb screws that on the part that allows you to move the seat back and forward, which is something that you might actually want to do like semi-regularly when swapping from person to person. You know, it'd be like in your real car in real life, if you had to undo a load of bolts to slide your seat forwards and backwards, but you could adjust the pedals in, in your car by doing a couple of thumb screws. That isn't normally the way around we would like it, at least not in road cars anyway. Um, you know, in, in race cars, the seat probably is bolted down in some configurations if there's only one driver and it doesn't move. But that is one of the drawbacks with this. I, 
I can't really say it's a bad cockpit. It's just not a good value cockpit. You know, it, it races fine. Like I have no problem recommending it as a usable, functional cockpit. If you get a position that you like and you're happy, you'll be fine. You know, you'll be able to race for hours. You haven't got much in the way of flex. That's all fine. It's just very, very expensive for what it is. Um, 530 notes delivered to my door. You know, you buy a Titan for about 70, 80 pound less and even less still if you apply my discount code, KG5. I don't have a discount code for PlaySeat, by the way. I don't, I don't have anything to do with PlaySeat. I had to buy this outright out of my own money. Um, so this will be on Facebook Marketplace uh, in a few days, I imagine, because I obviously don't have any reason to keep it beyond doing the review. So um, yes, that's, that's really the issue. It's just the price, it's strong money. I think it's a very nice looking cockpit as well. Katie come through and she said, cool, that's a nice looking cockpit. And it is, I like the black and the white design and the tubes and the angles all do look really nice. In fact, I think it looks nicer than the GT Amiga Titan, but I think the price is just too strong. So I'd happily recommend it if the price doesn't bother you and the lack of adjustability for the seat doesn't bother you. If you want something that looks nice in your front room or your bedroom or whatever, yeah, the footprint's relatively small and also it is very light. I'll just hop out. If you want to move it around, even with the, you know, my sim racing equipment attached to it, it doesn't really weigh a lot. You know, you can quite happily pick it up and move it around. And that doesn't cause problems from a racing point of view as you noticed a minute ago it doesn't wobble around or anything when i'm when i'm racing but it is very like you could slide it like in front of your tv like i've done here and then quite happily you know move it to one side afterwards so th there is an advantage there but yeah i think that really is the end of the review the cockpit itself is perfectly decent and functions well with the drawbacks i mentioned about the seat adjustability and the height adjustability it's just very expensive so if you don't mind the price and you don't mind the couple of drawbacks that it has, then by all means go and buy a play seat trophy. But otherwise, I would recommend something like the GT Amiga Titan for much less money and it has much more adjustability um, and sort of almost equal uh, rigidity from that point of view. If you've seen any sort of side to side flex during this video it's the cockpit itself sort of sinking into the carpet from side to side i haven't noticed any in this section here you know at all in use just in case anyone sort of spotted any whilst i was doing the driving segment but yeah as always thank you very much for watching and take it easy